I'm Steve Walker Duncan, and I'm on a quest. As a professional chef for 25 years and an instructor at the Camosun College Culinary Arts Program, I truly believe we have some of the best food in the world right here on the West Coast. Join me in discovering some of these culinary treasures. I'm standing aboard BC Ferry's Northern Adventure, and over there is our destination this week, Haida Gwaii. Formerly known as the Queen Charlottes, these islands, 100 kilometers from the mainland, are one of the remotest places in BC, and the ferry across the often stormy waters of Hecate Strait provides a vital year-round link. See a lot of variety of uh, the sea conditions. In the yep. wintertime, it's quite rough. The uh, interesting point of it is going through the islands before you get into the Hecate Strait and uh, the, the wildlife. You see a lot of whales, a lot of dolphins en route. The islands are the traditional home of the Haida Nation, who thrived here for thousands of years until the arrival of smallpox and other diseases that devastated the local population. At one time, our population had been estimated anywhere from 30,000 people here on Haida Gwaii before contact wow. to eventually to less than 600 people after smallpox. So we've really been um, been through a lot and we've just been surviving and, and rebuilding and reclaiming our culture and this is just a, um, a step along the way to getting, getting back to where we once were. Today, the rich culture of the Haida is celebrated in the superb new Heritage Centre in Skidigat. We're not a traditional museum. Um, we are a museum and cultural center, which means that we're also, you know, we're telling the story of our past, our present, but also um, our future. So really, what we are is uh, showing the living culture. There are no large towns on Haida Gwaii, only small communities like Queen Charlotte City, the administrative center for the islands. Recently, the southern part of the archipelago became the Guayanas National Park, nearly 1,500 square kilometers of pristine wilderness. It contains the remains of many historical Haida villages, including the UNESCO World Heritage Site at Ninstins. Although it is only accessible by boat or seaplane, it is well worth the effort to visit these hauntingly beautiful sites and to experience the awesome wilderness. The easiest way to do this is with a local adventure company like Moresby Explorers. We've still got some river valleys, we've got some stands of old growth, we've got rugged, beautiful mountain peaks, and got lots of little islands to hop around on so this is a unique place and with the beauty around us and the access that we're capable of a lot of people come back saying you know this is a high point for me like I've never done anything like this this is the kind of thing I hear back right so. although remote these islands were able to support a large population the elders would say um, you know once the tide is out the table is set and yep. I think that's still the case for many people today yep. And the food basically, um, the rich resource and abundance that Haida Gwaii has provided for us, which we're, we're so thankful for, and a lot of our ceremony and songs are just um, thanking the Creator for the abundance that we've received and um, how lucky we are to be here. I'm visiting Haida Gwaii, where some residents are harvesting unusual local foods. Daphne Romero collects seaweed and packages them as an alternative to pasta. We just came for harvesting and we just got uh, these yummy fronds. Oh, look at these guys. From Skidigate Inlet. And this is uh, Macrocystis, giant kelp. Yep, yeah, yeah. And what we do, we just cut it in uh, like lasagna blades. Yeah. You know lasagna, of course you're a yeah. chef. It's so, a beautiful texture. Yeah, Very it is. smooth and, and yes. silky. Yeah. And yummy too. I bet it is. Being a chef, I had to try some. It's got really great texture, isn't it? It's got... mm -hmm. And when you cook it, it's just al dente. When you cook it al dente, it's yep. just really smooth and green. And... The seaweed is dried in open racks for about 20 hours before being wrapped. So this is what we end up with, is it? Yeah. Oh, wow. So Beautiful really sort of... green plate that's ready to use and it as, you as say, a seaweed lasagna. Lasagna noodles. Perfect, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And it's... May I taste a little bit? Absolutely. Yeah. 
definitely. You can, and you can actually smell the salt on it now. You can, yeah. it becomes. Yeah. Wow, that is really quite, it's almost like, it's almost got like a chewing gum kind of texture to mm -hmm. it, doesn't it? And then it yeah, rehydrates definitely. and we get the full flavor of the seaweed. Yeah, when you put it in the water, it's just bright, bright green. All the chlorophyll goes out. And so then, it basically uh, goes back to its original, its original colors? Yep. That's wonderful. You don't need a boat to harvest wild foods here. Just some sturdy shoes and a little bit of local knowledge. Lana Wilhelm is leading me to one of her favorite spots to harvest sea asparagus. But we're not the only ones around. It's obviously a favorite spot for bears, looking at the amount of scat around. Don't step in it. <laughs> Once we're out of the woods, we can start looking for the asparagus. Okay, so often you can hear sea asparagus before you can see it. And that's what we get underfoot, is it? You can, it's, it's crispy. That's right. To pick seaweed, to pick sea asparagus in BC, you need a license. You have to hand harvest. I couldn't come out here, much as I wish too many times, with a push lawnmower. Mow it all and up into a bag and down. away you go. It's all by hand. Okay. And you are, you as a, you know, a way to pick it properly, you never want to go too far down on the stalk. Yeah. You always want to go a couple of inches up, a nice clean cut with your clean new scissors. So what can we do with it once it's, <laughs> once we've got our sea asparagus? Because of course it is relatively salty. You can have it raw, you can have it uh, steamed or blanched. Um, and that's exactly what most people do mm -hmm. with it. Myself, I really like it pickled. And there is a booming underground pickling sea asparagus industry happening right. on island. So basically anything you do with asparagus, land exactly. asparagus, you can do with this. Obviously exactly. with the, the caveat that it's it's much more delicate. And I think that salinity, that saltiness to it is, is I think it's a, an appealing characteristic. It is. It really does have a... It is. And because again, the, the ecology of it is an, as a filter plant, it has all the great things that seaweeds do too. So it has a lot of those trace minerals that sea plants have it has a lot of vitamin a b12 it's calcium etc so uh, and it is quite a good fiber source so it has all of those nutritional benefits to it uh, that you would see from seaweed families also at this point the producer spotted a bear which had ambled out of the woods after us so we decided that we collected enough sea asparagus for today and headed back leaving the rest for another time It's the next day, and I'm heading for the northern tip of the islands with Andrew Merrilees of Haida Gwaii Discovery Tours. He's taking me to North Beach to try crabbing, but on the way he insisted we have to stop for a cinnamon bun at the Moon Over Nikoon Bakery, which is completely off the grid. Meredith, the gal that owns this place, is an ingenious person. She has solar panels up 100 feet up that tree, which gives me electricity for light and, and uh, music. The uh, water is a huge tank up on the hill and it's gravity feed and the fridge and the stove and the hot water are propane. Wow. So and you're really just sort of on this, this one track road out to the, to the north, north beach and, and you get a lot of, I guess you get a lot of people stopping in for location, your famous location, cinnamons. Location, location, location. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. And this is, I mean, these are the finished ones. These look awesome. Right. And this is the, this is the beginning. This is the beginning process. Yeah. Yeah, so just a, a standard sort of yeast dough? Yep. Of course, the secret of a cinnamon bun is the butter and the cinnamon and the sugar, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so we're rolling it out. You're rolling it out quite thin. Quite so you, thin, so you yes. Get lots of lots of layers. The trick, yeah, exactly. Yeah. See, you know that secret already. Yeah. Cinnamon and brown sugar. Cinnamon and brown sugar. Oh, lots of it. Lots and lots of it. So you do put raisins in them? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And then the rolling process. Roll it up there gently, not too tight. So how many of these do you make a day? Andrew made me make 120 the other day. <laughs> Bad Andrew. Bad yeah, Andrew. Yeah, right. <laughs> We're gonna do two dozen cinnamon buns out of this, I think. Okay, and we're gonna sit this on top of. So how long do you let those proof for? For oh half an hour. Oh, not, not very long then. No, not very long. And here we have the finished product. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And Wendy kind of gave me a knife and fork here, but as I say, I'm a bit of a purist when it comes okay. to cinnamon buns. And you have to unroll them. <laughs> That's the whole reason. Oh. Just find the end and then just, there we go. That's the way they do it in the big city, That's I guess, eh? Hey? <laughs> oh, Wendy, that's delicious. That's Thank just you. like lots of cinnamon, not too sweet. Yep. Mm. So, fortified with that excellent cinnamon bun, it's on to the spectacular sweep of North Beach. Those crabs had better watch out. 
You've got your fishing license, so you're set that. We've got a dip net for you for the crab. Okay. We've got a pair of chest waders. We've got a bucket. And we've got a caliper, because okay. the crabs have to be uh, of legal size. Right. So yeah. when you get them, we'll check them, and if they're legal size, we'll bring them in. With a bit of luck, we'll be eating crab for, uh, for dinner this evening. Nice. Nice. Okay. Half the fun's getting in the soup. <laughs> okay, I feel drier already. It's gonna do very well. <laughs> okay, we got our net, we got our catch, catch cage. Let's go. All right. Andrew makes it all sound so easy. What you're gonna be looking for are probably six and a quarter inch crab, and they'll be scurrying, and they'll see you, and they're gonna wanna run. So you're gonna wanna put your, your net down in front of them before they run too far. But I notice he's not coming in. And these waves are a lot bigger when you're trying to stand up in them. And the water is cold. Still, I want my crab. All I have to do is somehow spot one in the surf. I try walking one way, then the other, then back again. There's lots of seaweed. But the crab basket stays empty. After half an hour, I'm soaked, I'm freezing, I'm hungry, and I've not seen a single crab. Time for plan B. Find a good restaurant. Northern Haida Gwaii is home to the excellent Trout House. But it's the weekend of the Edge of the World Music Festival, and Chef Brian Eade is there. Time to get my festival outfit on. The Edge of the World is a big event here. While the festival is on, a lot less work gets done. Everyone seems to be here having a good time. I find Brian in the kitchen tent stirring a huge pot of soup. So what do we got going here? We got a big, uh, pot of, big pot of soup? We do, big pot of clam chowder with razor clams, local of course. Oh, fabulous. So do you have people turn up or do you have gardeners or farmers that you work with? Or oh, do you do a little bit of everything? We have both. We'll have a number of people that'll just show up on the doorstep with buckets of berries or nice. whatever it might be. And then, um, but for the most part, um, we have uh, Lavoie's is a great farm that's just right here on island in Port Clements. Um, friends of mine, Dom, and a number of people up in, up north where I am, they yeah. have great organic gardens out there. And what about foraging? Do you do, do you have people forage for you as oh, well? Oh yeah, absolutely. Right now, right now we're making a crumble with huckleberries and there's three girls out back and they're picking away. And so they're being picked and then they're going to be cooked here? Absolutely, yeah. That's fresh. Yeah, that's, that's fresh. the ultimate and freshest. So I may not have got my crabs, but at least I can enjoy some of Brian's excellent chowder and the rest of the festival. We're back from the wilds of Haida Gwaii, and I'm delighted to welcome Gloria Makarenko into the studio with us this afternoon. And I'm delighted to be here, Steve. Thank you so much. And I understand you're you're from the Great North as well, yourself. I you? grew up in Prince Rupert, Which is and a wonderful city. Uh, it is a great, great town to grow up in. I went all the way through school there, and I think the longer I'm away from Prince Rupert, the more I realize sort of the the riches of uh, that that community had to offer, just in terms of fresh seafood and. My father was also a hunter, so we had a lot of, oh, uh, of a game. lot of game growing up too. So we're going to do sushi today. Okay. Nice, fresh. We've got some fresh chanterelles from from the Haida Gwaii. Now these ones are actually these are dried, so you can get these any time of the year. Just rehydrate them in a little bit of warm water, 20 to 30 minutes, and they're back to almost perfect. So we're going to do a vegetarian sushi with the mushrooms. We've got some peppers and some onions. We're going to do some clams and salmon sushi. I've never made sushi. I love sushi. I've never, ever We're going to make you an expert. Well, okay. What we're going to do, I've, I've done the rice already because that takes a while. This is a sushi rice, okay, a short grain rice, so it's very starchy, which makes it stick together. Sushi. And no, nothing else. You don't put vinegar in it or any... You answered any... my next question. No. Oh, really? There we go. Oh, look. Is that so vinegar this, in this that pot? This is the sushi vinegar. Now, what this is is two-thirds <laughs> of a cup of rice wine vinegar, oh, okay. half a cup of sugar, and a quarter cup of salt. So it's very, very, it's very pungent because that's what sushi is. Sushi literally means vinegared rice or pickled rice. So basically what this does, this is seasoning, this is flavoring the rice. So we just pour that last little bit in there. I've already put some on there. And we just keep that covered with a damp towel just in case it dries out on us. What I've actually done is pre-done some clams. Okay, so I've done the, cooked the Aren't clams you prepared? and just chopped them up so we don't have to get clam nectar all over the place. The next thing we need to do is we're just gonna sort out some mushrooms. So if we take a couple of couple of these each. What we want to do, because we're trying to make everything long and thin so it rolls, is if you just grab the mushrooms from the top and just sort of strip them down. Oh, I don't even need a knife for this. No, that's oh, it. They just, peeling mushrooms. They just naturally separate into long strands. Oh, I love that texture. I've got texture. a little pot over here on a, on a low heat. I'm just going to get that going. I've got a drop of, just a drop of vegetable oil in there. So, how long have you been with the CBC? 
Oh, do you really want to know? <laughs> I started during Expo 86, oh, okay. so 25 years ago. Wow. And that I used to fill in a few weeks a year doing the weather of all things. I know you've met my, my colleague, Claire Martin. Miss Claire the, Martin, one, yes. of our, one of our favorites. Now, she was a meteorologist. I was a fill-in weather person, just right. kind of. So that was a, a nice way to get my foot in the door at CBC. So what I'm going to do with these, I'm just yep. going to throw these into the pot while you're there. Okay, we well, go. I'm telling you about my life. Sure. <laughs> And then from then on, it's been news, 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 news. Okay, so we're gonna get going on our seaweed. on our sushi here. So we've got nori, which is a, a dried seaweed. I've got a little bit of water. Now, wonderful sushi rolling mats. Yes. Okay, if okay. you just slide that underneath here. As I said, I've never done this. So what we want to do, just dip the tips of your fingers in, in a little bit of water. And oh, we get to play with our food. I love this. Food is meant to be played with. That's oh. what it's all about. So oh, put I a little pinch on there. So you see how it's it, the rice is cooked. Yeah. It's it's fairly delicate. At the same time, it's quite sticky. If it's sticking too much, just dip the tips of your fingers in the in the water. And then yep. what we're going to do is just you want to basically okay. Oh, okay. do the front the see. front half to two thirds. We just need to spread yours out a little bit. Just bring okay. it to the back a little bit okay. more. And then now what I'm going to do is I'll just down. take a little bit of the clam here. I'll pass that over to you. So you're really spreading is. it out a little bit there too. Yeah, we're going to spread I'm, it out because what we're going to do is we're going to put a piece of salmon in here next. Okay. So this is of course sushi grade salmon. It means they've frozen it to very, very low temperature so that any, any sort of bacteria, bacteria well. and whatnot has been, has been killed. Here comes the technical bit. Are you ready? Now, what you want to do is just make sure the, the sushi is at the back of the, of the mat there. Okay. And then if you kind of just lift the backs with your thumbs. Mm -hmm. And then put your fingers on the salmon. I feel like this is a test of salmon. <laughs> <And then laughs> I've you, never as you, done it. As you roll it up, oh. just push the salmon back in yes, there. Yes, 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 See yes. See that? Mm -hmm. And then once you get it tucked in, then you take the whole mat mm -hmm. and just drop the front, and then you can just bring that in, squeeze it. You've been practicing. I got some. So what do I do with these little extra grains of rice That's that fine. end up That's over fine. here? If you okay. just use your mat as a little bit of a bulldozer, just sort of go past them and then slide them back. Oh, isn't this fun? There we go. I can't this believe is I've never great done this kids. before. Kids love to do this. They really, you know, they, and they, of course they pick it up like that. It's, and then if you just sort of take your fingers and kind of just squeeze along the, the bamboo, because that's just putting a little bit of pressure. Once again, we want the rice to retain its definition. Okay. And then once you get to that point, then just take a little bit of water and just off the, the top end there so it'll glue it up. And then lift up your mat, hold this front, and as you pull, oh. keep it nice and tense. And again, as it rolls, there you go. That's beautiful. You just oh, made so sushi. Much that. So I'm excited. Well <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so that's one. So that's our salmon one. So should we do another one? We do some mushrooms. Can I just this, look at these for a little bit? Absolutely. Because I'm really hey, excited wait till we cut about them. it. That's that's fantastic. My okay. first, my so first sushi experience. So if you do you want to grab some some of the nori, oh, yes, we'll okay. have another piece of those. I know. Okay. Can I just quit while I'm ahead? No, nope, no. Nope, you got to keep going. <laughs> you got to keep, keep going. going. We're okay. gonna make we're gonna make you an okay. expert. We're gonna start doing time trials in a minute. Okay. So I got it. This is going to be a vegetarian one. Okay. So we've got a little bit of just sliced up green onion, a little bit of sliced up red pepper for some color. Nice job. So we on can the just onion. make a, do the same sort of thing. Okay. Just slide these along in a nice straight line. So colorful. I love this green and red. And that's the beauty of this kind of sushi is that it, it, it's it's so fresh and light. And then a few of the chanterelles, and we just line them up. So we'll do fingers the same again. On the edge. Just use your thumbs at the back, and then use your other fingers just to kind of hold the filling in place. Bring the whole thing over. There you go. Well done. <gasps> Look at that. Look at this that. This is so fun. They're beautiful. Cool. Okay, do you want to see another? Do you want to see a different way? Yes. Okay, do you want to do an outside in? Outside in. Yes. yes. Okay, so we're going to do pretty much the same thing. Okay. Did you take more rice for that one? A little bit more for this one. Just to. You're going right out to the edges. Yeah, That's we're going to cover of, the okay, whole I'm just thing. trying to. Okay. So then what we're going to do is we're going to just take the whole sheet and flip it over. You made it a little bit more squishy on that one. Just no? a little bit. Just okay. a, just a touch. And then this one, I think this one will do something a little bit different. I'll put, we'll do salmon. Term. Squishy. Squishy, that's a technical term. <laughs> we, do, we use that at the college all the time. <laughs> okay, and this time I'm going to put a little pepper in. A little bit of our Pepper with green the salmon and the green onion. And then we do exactly the same thing. Just bring that right up. And this one we're just oh, going to be... Oh, with the bamboo as well. With okay. the bamboo as well, yeah. Now I'm this one, you do want to kind of make sure that your, your sushi is exposed there so that it's going to stick to the, the seaweed. That's it. Use your little, bull, your little bulldozer technique to right. All right. pull that one in. There you go, and you're almost done. And then just do the same as before, all the way around. Now this one you do want to really sort of just put a little bit of pressure on it. Make sure that's, that's nice and compact because... Oh! 
<laughs> I'm delighting and amazing you're myself. For the, you're pleased with that, aren't you? That, there we well, go. Well, that is fantastic. So now the fun part. Now we get to cut it and eat it. So now the only thing you want to make sure you, just the tip here is just to take your knife, make sure it's it wet because otherwise the rice It'll will stick. It'll stick to it just That's like right. it does to your fingers. Okay. That's right. So just wet the knife a little bit. Okay. And then as thick as you want. I mean, I usually do about an, about an inch thick. Okay. Yeah. And then just let the knife slide through. Okay. So slide. There we go. It through. Oh, That's look at that. fantastic. Gloria will make a sushi, a sushi <laughs> chef out of you. Yeah. <laughs> Arigato. You gotta get that. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Can we do that too? Absolutely. Wait, wait, I think we have to bow I, after this, don't we? <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so what do you think? Fantastic. I'm going to try one of your salmon and clam ones because they just look delicious. Okay, I'm going to go for the outside in one. Gloria? Cheers. A pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Mmm. Mmm. Fantastic. <laughs> the veneer and the salmon and the seafood. It always works together, doesn't it? It's delicious. And I've got to work a little bit on the aesthetics, but you know what? That'll hey, come. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> That'll come. Thanks so much. No problem, Gloria. Thank you so much. And those are some of the flavors of the Haida Gwaii. If you're cooking with fish and you really don't like that fishy smell in your kitchen, an easy and quick way to get rid of it, plain white distilled vinegar. Put about half a cup in a bowl or a small dish. Leave that on your kitchen counter overnight, and the next morning you'll come up and your kitchen will smell fresh and beautiful. We're here again with Rod Phillips, the wine expert extraordinaire. Rod, we've got a little bit of sushi, we've got a little bit of chanterelle, we've got a little bit of salmon, some clams. That's quite a mixture. It is quite a mixture, and it's a, it's a great mixture because obviously we have a lot of sushi here. My family loves sushi, my nine-year-old loves sushi. And it, but it does provide a really good challenge for wine. So I've selected three wines here that will go uh, with the, the, the textures, the spice, but also with a little bit of chanterelle mushroom that you put yeah. in there. So that was, that was a bit of a curveball well, for me. we try, you know, I like my curveballs. Yeah, you do, indeed. <laughs> the Intrigue 10 is the first thing we're going to go to, which is a Riesling Gewurz blend. It comes out of the Okanagan. Roger Wong is the winemaker, his own little pet project. And you'll get a lot of freshness on that. you got to, like, eat It's apricot, a beautiful pear. smell of wine. Yeah, it's like an orchard. It does, it does, exactly. This is a big, rich wine that will just make it, it'll just caress. It, and that's exactly, it just sort of coats the mouth. And I can just imagine the rice and the spice from the, the acidity from the vinegar and the, the, the richness of the chanterelles working so well with that. Exactly, exactly. Now the second one I've got here is Volcanic Hills, which is uh, just on the side of the Mount Boucherie. Just down uh, from Mission Hill. and Just down uh, from Mission Hill, exactly. Yeah. Now, generally, you don't put red wine with, uh, with, uh, with sushi at all, but Gamia, as you know, is a grape of Beaujolais, but it has a juiciness to it, but it also has an earthiness to it, and this particular one has a great earthiness to it. Which, of course, blends so well with the umami of the mushroom. Mm -hmm. So the last one, of course, we have to have a brew. We have to have a brew, have have and, a, and a Japanese beer, and of a, course. And a Japanese beer, which just goes so well with this. And the reason why you usually pair beer with this is that there's that dry acidity on the palate. It yep. just coats it a lot, uh, so you're ready for the next bite. Wonderful, wonderful. Once again, Rod, outstanding job. Thank you. Flavors of the West Coast, Rod Phillips, sushi, what more could you ask for?